uh, in this video I'm going to walk you through the way to calculate the resistor value for the pull-up resistor in an I2C bus. Uh, we typically use like 4.7k or 10k or sometimes 3.3k even 2k and so on and so forth. Uh, we want to understand what's the logic behind the uh, the resistor value selection and I'm going to give you a feeling of that resistor value and how it changes the characteristics of this uh, the I2C uh, pulses and why we choose those things so in your particular case that value will you may vary but we can have a feeling should we increase it from 4.7k or should we decrease it so this is a typical I2C bus where we have a one master and there will maybe several slaves connected to this and we have one pull up resistor and that is for whether it's clock line or the data line from the electrical perspective it does not matter whether it's a clock or a data line both will have will behave similarly so let's uh, look at some uh, extreme things what happens if we make this rp this pull up resistor very high uh, one thing you need to keep in mind that all these devices will have a load capacitance which is typically 10 picofarad but for an older devices it could be higher it could be as high as 50 pf and i have seen some chinese or other taiwanese manufacturer having very high capacitance so 10 pf is a typical value but it could be much higher and all these capacitance values they are in parallel so they all add up and when these add up the and then with this pull up when this guy is trying to drive this bus it's not a vertical straight line in, and instead it will rise slowly like this and the rise time will depend upon the value of the R and this capacitance and this time will be typically of the order of R into C this R C. now if you make this resistor R very high like 1 mega ohm or something this thing will be so slow that it will deform the clock and the data ship and, and the, the receiving device could uh, misinterpret this bus so obviously a way, this is the problem with the very high R value now let's see what happens if the resistor value is very slow obviously your rise time will be fast because RC time constant will be very small it is going to rise very fast and for that this uh, lower value is good but what is the problem with the lower value number one if you make this R very low the current can f go to flow it into it and then that uh, your power consumption will be high very high will be high it's not very high but it certainly will be high which will matter if you have a battery power device but there is another problem with this if you make this register value very low as you will see it is there this kind of create a voltage divider and the low value when you are trying to drive this bus too low that low may not be low enough and then it will can misinterpret that low signal and we will derive into the calculation but before that let's look at the rising edge problem and for that I2C has two speed specifications one is standard speed and one is uh, a higher speed I don't know what it is called but it's one is 100 kilohertz and the other is 400 kilohertz with 100 kilohertz if you derive the time period it's 1 upon 100 kilohertz which is 1 upon 100 milliseconds and let's convert it into microsecond that will be 10 microsecond or you can say 10 into 10,000 nanosecond if you plot this curve like this you can say that this time period is going to be 10 into 10,000 nanosecond half of that will be like uh, 5 nanosecond and it's reasonable to assume that one fifth if you can keep this rising edge to one fifth of this whole time period that is reasonably fair and for that we can think that this rise time should be less than one tenth of this whole period which means this rise time should be close to a thousand nanosecond or less if you make it rise time bigger than that the curve will start bending and it won't look good so that is a very ballpark figure for the rise time calculation for this pulse now this let's go into 
the see, get a feeling of this real life scenario, we want to keep R into C less than 1000 nanosecond. In a typical scenario, let's say we have total of 10 I2C devices, each having 10 PF capacitor. In some cases, it will be 20 PF. In that case, let's say you'll have five devices. So the total capacitance, they are all in parallel, they all add up to make up 100 PF capacitor. So to calculate the value of R, in order to keep the right time fast, still fast, we have R into 100 PF less than 1000 nanosecond. So 1000 nanosecond here, 100 PF here, that becomes, this is 10 to the power minus 12, and this is 10 to the power minus 9, this go up and becomes kilo. And then this will have 1000 divided by 100 as 10k. So this resistor should be 10k and that in a standard situation, a typical 10k value is okay. Probably you could do a higher value if you have only one device. If you have more than one device, many devices, 10k is a reasonably good value. Now coming back to the same thing you apply for 400 kilohertz, this time period is one fourth of this, 2.5 into 1000 nanosecond. And this whole thing also roughly becomes one fourth of it. It's actually 200 nanosecond. But let's say for simplicity, you want to keep it less than 300 nanosecond. You'll find that the resistor value should be less than or equal to somewhat like 2.5k to be precise. But 3.3k is a roundabout good value as well. So given that the C capacitor value is we are expecting a 10 PF to 10 devices. So if you are working at a 400 kilohertz speed, try to use a 3.3 kilo ohm and you should be good for most cases. If you are using 100 kilohertz, uh, 100 kilohertz per speed, then 10K will be, should be fair enough. But you could, in some cases, if some of the, one of the devices, for example, is given such that the capacitance of that device itself is, is like, is, is maybe 200 PF, what you do? I mean, you take out your oscilloscope, you see that the, 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 the rising edge is so bad because of one of those devices, in that case, you may have to bump up the, uh, reduce the value of R from, let's say, 10K to something like 2K or something like that. So this is the whole story of the resistor value calculation. Now for the low, uh, why don't we go to a very low value? Uh, the reason for that is of course I, one thing, one reason I told that it's going to consume a lot of power. But then what happens, the way it works is that these devices, in order one, the, the way it pulls up is kind of, all these pins are an open collector pin, or an open drain pin. And to draw, to drive it low, this transistor or the fat conducts. And when it conducts, you can think of this as an RDS on or transistor on or the FET on resistor RDS on. Now, there is some voltage appearing here, which is not exactly zero, but depends upon this, this RDS on resistor value. And that very, very device to device. Some devices have lower RDS on, others have higher device RDS on value. So what, what we do is, let's say if, if this resistor is also, I choose instead of the 10K or whatever, 3.3K, I choose this resistor at something arbitrarily like a, a very low value, uh, maybe 100 ohm. And let's say this R, equivalent RDS ohm is of the order of, for example, uh, let's say 50 ohm. In that case, if this, three, this is 3.3 volt. You can think of this voltage as 1.1 volt. You wanted 0 volt, but this is 1.1 volt, and that is too high. So inter instead of interpreting it as low, you, it will interpret it as a high value. So what do you do in that case? You cannot use 100 ohm. Let's say try to make it 200 ohm. In that case, this value could be a 50 into 3.3 divided by 250 which is roughly one-fifth of this, a little better, but probably not still good, uh, good enough, which is like 0.66 volt. The value at this point will be 0.66 volt. If I make it like a, a, a maybe 1,000, now maybe we are good enough, this low value is low enough, so that it can be interpreted as low. So there is a standard way of saying that the current flowing through this RDS on 
it's typically like 3 milliampere, the calculation is taken with a, uh, 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 and then we can say that if VCC is the, so this, this value, the pull up voltage value, VOL is the lowest voltage reading that should drive it to low, typically like 0.4 volt, then this current I, which is 3 milliampere, this I should be less than VCC minus OL or RP or we can calculate from here RP must be, this resistance RP should be large enough so that this voltage here will be more than VOL voltage and this is the equation of this where I is typically 3 milliampere. I hope this, this gives you a clarification of the I2C uh, pull up resistance. Thanks for taking a look.